The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judea, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The Gospel of the Lord. In the 16th century, the Blessed Virgin appeared to Juan Diego, an Indian who was native to the country, poor, an apparent nobody, but she encountered him and chose him to pass on her message to a bishop who would be skeptical at first, but finally see This bishop was finally convinced because Our Lady told Juan Diego, I'm, the bishop wants a sign, so we're going to give him a sign. So in the middle of winter, Castilian roses are growing on a hill where Our Lady appeared. And it's the place where she wanted a basilica built. So Juan Diego goes to the bishop and he says, I've got the proof you wanted. And he opens his, they call it the tilma, like a mantle or a cloak. He opens it and the roses fall out. And the bishop is very impressed. Where did these roses come from? It's impossible that they would be here. But inside of the tilma is the image of the Blessed Virgin. And it's made of fiber from, cas from um, cactuses. And what's interesting is that tilma has survived with integrity to this day. And because it's made with something organic, it should not have survived. It's miraculous. I'd, I, I'd love to spend an hour with you today to go through all the stuff in the tilma. It's, there's so much there, but one of the things that comes up is if you, if, if you have a, a real good image of the tilma, you can use a magnifying glass and look into the eye of Mary, and it, there's an image of Juan Diego within the, within the eye. It's very interesting. There's all kinds of little quirks about it. Nevertheless, Our Lady wanted it to appear to encourage people that she was their mother and wanted to care for us all. So she's known as Our Lady of the Americas, whereas in most apparitions, Our Lady appears in a particular location in town. And so, however, while she's known as Our Lady of Guadalupe, she's also, she has also claimed to be the patron of the Americas. That includes us. 
Within seven years, nine million people came to the Catholic faith of Catholicism. Isn't that amazing? Nine million people. And we're, and we're talking about a culture whose roots were in the Aztecs, who regularly, centuries before, they regularly conducted sacrificial rituals, slaughtering people and slaughtering babies. She reveals herself most notably to the poor of Mexico. And her apparition was to be a sign of her maternal care. Now that word is chosen carefully, her maternal care. She's pictured as pregnant in the tilma if you look at it properly. She has a desire to uphold life and all its fullness. And if you look carefully at the tilma, this pregnancy, it reveals her agenda. She is pro-life. And because she is pro-life, she, she represents a God who is pro-life. Indeed, this is a non-negotiable. And although we are living in a culture that scorns that, we must stand in the truth as Catholics. And we must stand in the truth for a one who represents the truth to us, the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's interesting that if you go take a look in, at some of the major apparitions of Mary coming forth, most of the apparitions are preceding a tragedy that is on the way. And so with Guadalupe, shortly after, less than 200 years after she appeared, became the Mexican Revolution. And there was a huge slaughter of Catholics. Catholic priests were martyred just for wearing their clerics. Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of La Salette, our Lady of the Immaculate Conception and uh, Fatima, all these apparitions preceded the major world wars. In an apparition that is not ratified yet, Medjugorje, shortly before the Balkan War began, Our Lady appeared to some children and that became, they became the visionaries of Medjugorje. There's also another, uh, another apparition which, which has been ratified but not very well known, the, vis the apparition of Akira in Japan, which preceded the World War II. And what happened to Japan, the horror. Our Lady of Guadalupe comes to us today in a season of Advent, appropriately, as the woman who is promoting life and assuring the world of her protection for the unborn and for all her dear children. However, sometimes we can be like petulant children. Instead of hiding you could say, or seeking protection from our parents and especially our mother Mary, we can avoid all the benefits she would like to give to us. And so it becomes vital for us to live our Catholic faith with vibrance, to attend the Holy Mass with fervor, fervor to be faithful to the Ten Commandments and the teachings of the Church, and to cherish the Eucharist. This is the stuff that makes a culture not only pro-life, but a faith that becomes strong and vibrant. Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared and nine million in seven years. We must pray so that in our country here in America, 
as part of the vision of Guadalupe. We must be zealous in our faith and we must listen to our dear mother Mary. As the prophet Zechariah says, see, I'm coming to dwell among you, says the Lord. Many nations shall join themselves to the Lord. You shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. And she has been sent. It's up to us now to welcome her. And so blessed are you who believe in what was spoken to you by the Lord, and it would be fulfilled. Regina Jenny, let her